in this video and see how to define different load cases in LIMPRO and to combine those load cases with different factors to get combinations. We'll use a simple uh, two span continuous beam with the uh, two five meter spans to find the three nodes like that. Just uh, defining the members, so click members like that. We'll assume they're constant um, cross section on the members to have both type one. We'll uh, click and then control click the through then the other all supports to make them into pinned supports. So that's the basic structure. Now I want to find two types of loads which um, self weight of the structure, which in the Euro code is called the permanent action. And also then uh, what um, is called a variable action, so the imposed loading from the use. So this, 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 this might be a beam support, supporting a floor in a building. So to do that, we need to go to load mass and go into load case. Now case one is the default load case that's in there. So we'll change the name of that to permanent. And we'll add a new one called variable. Okay, so we now have two load cases. We can go back and define combina combinations of those. So you add in a combination, we'll call it combination one, the default name. And it assumes it's it's a factor of one on the permanent load and a factor of one on, on the very on, on the very one is the default. So we change this to 1.35 and 1.5. Click OK on that. Just check that again, and there we go. That's fine. Okay, so we now have two basic load cases set up, and we can apply loads to the members. So I'm going to apply the same loads to both members. Click, control, and click, and then right click and add load to the members. Now we see we have a choice here: permanent or variable. So I'm working for to find first the permanent load as a add a distributed load into that load case. So I'm going to say that's 10 kilonewtons per meter downwards, a vertical load of 10 kilonewtons per meter, which runs the full length of the beam. Remember to look at the hint to if you have any doubt about what AB and P1 and P2 mean. So we'll apply that load. Now we can also say apply a point load as part of that we're still working on the, on the permanent load case, and a, let's apply a point load of 15 at uh, point, 0 0.5, halfway along each beam. If both beams are still selected, so it will apply to both of them. And there we have the permanent load. If we switch here to see the variable load case, there are no loads defined. Okay, so if you now right click on them, Add load. Now we just need to select variable here, and I'm going to add a UDL and of 20 kilonewtons per meter, representing the the loading on, on on the beam from occupation of the building, the imposed loading or the variable action. So that's going to run the whole length of the beam, and we can do that. So we can look at the two load cases. There's the permanent. There's the variable, and we can define whatever many load cases as we wish. And when we run the analysis, it analyzes all load cases. So we can then look at the results for the different load cases. So if we run the analysis, we get the deflected shape. If we look, for instance, at the bending moment, switch off the grid and we'll zoom there to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so the bending moment here now is this is grayed out. This is when we're talking about the structure. This is when we're talking about the results. This is, the results at the moment are being shown for the permanent load case. There's a hugging moment of the central support of 45 kilonewton meters. If you look at the variable, it's 62. So if we add that, you get 100, but then applying the factors, you'd expect it to be a bit higher. And there is 154. So the, the scale doesn't change, but the, the numbers do. Okay. So similarly for shear, we can look at the results for 
and then you see the point load coming in there the variables there's no point load as i've defined it here so you can look at the deflection under each of them as well if you wish and the combina combination again it's the numbers that change the deflected shape doesn't change very much unless there is a point load in, in one of them you look at the tabulated results you can again select which low case you want to see And that's it. So it, it's reasonably straightforward as long as you follow the sequence as I've shown it there. Define the low cases first, define the combinations, and as you apply the loads, you select the the low case that the predictor load you're applying, run the analysis, and then view the results according to the different low cases and combinations of them.